Sabrina is from CAV, Organizing Asian Communities, um, and she works with residents in Queensbridge, and she's going to talk about some of the organizing that she's doing around these issues. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Karen mentioned, my name is Sabrina Jalal, and I am a public housing organizer at CAV, Organizing Asian Communities. Um, our mission is, and has been, and always will be, working to build grassroots community power across diverse, poor, and working class Asian immigrant and refugee communities in New York City, to fight for institutional change, and to participate in broader movement towards racial, gender, and economic justice. About two weeks ago, to be exact, November 12th, Governor Cuomo and Jeff Bezos announced the sites to be to build their new two new headquarters in. The first one in Crystal City, Northern Virginia, and the second one here in LIC. Um, LIC is close and um, Queen, it's literally neighbors to Queensbridge Housing, Niger Queensbridge Housing. Queensbridge Housing is America's largest public housing um, development in the area. It houses nearly 7,000 residents. For the past five years, CAV has been organizing in Queensbridge housing, building the power of Bangladeshi, Korean, and Chinese tenants towards language access, racial justice, community building, and improved um, material living conditions. Because we're member-led, as soon as the announcement was made, we met with the member leaders in Queensbridge housing to discuss Amazon's HQ2s impact in Long Island City if the proposal was to get approved. We talked about the approval process and how it would not include public reviews, the community's input, and will bypass city planning. Makes you wonder, what do they do? Um, so we thoroughly went over Amazon's trade-off. What do they offer um, in place of coming to the neighborhood? How will that impact not only Queensbridge, but the greater New York City? Um, jobs. We talked about jobs. Jobs for who? Is it for the locals? Is it for the residents of Queensbridge? Um, we also talked about the trillion dollar, the three billion dollar tax break that they will get. Um, but what could be done with that money instead of giving Amazon a billion, a billion dollar company a tax break? Um, so with our members and our staff and board, uh, we came to a conclusion that if Queensbridge was, I mean, if Amazon was to come to Queensbridge, it'll only add to the displacement and gentrification that's already happening in the neighborhoods. We're all demanding no Amazon in Queens, and better yet, no Amazon in New York City. Um, yeah. Gentrification is something that's long, that's in Long Island City. Um, started long before Amazon decided to build its new headquarters here. Um, the announced, since the announcement, new potential location of Long Island City, it created a massive spike in speculation within just days, as little as over the night. Um, according to our real estate website, Redfin, um, it showed that the, property, uh, that the property value in Long Island City increased by 794% in less than a week and a half. That is a week and a half that the announcement has been made and you have people from all across the country wanting to invest in property values. So imagine the increase in the rent. Imagine the increase in the mortgages. Um, that it will affect the business owners that are there, the mom and pop shops that are there, as well as homeowners that have been living there for about decades, generations after generations. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, it will drastically change and push out the small businesses. Uh, NYCHA has already turned to privatizing land in the area, um, and that poses a further risk to public housing. Bringing in a trillion dollar company will impact our tenants' neighborhoods, from small businesses to transportations to public schools. Has anyone been to Queensbridge? 21st? All right. What are the only subway stops that go there? The F, right? And it doesn't run that well on the weekends, does it? No. So imagine instead of spending money into fixing our subway station so that residents can travel to and from the city on the weekends, imagine how well that will be. 
Instead, we're investing money in a billion dollar company that can obviously afford itself. Um, what's the other, is there any other closest ones? No, right? So imagine all those little kids that have to go to school, that have to travel, like if that was to be here and on the weekends they wanted to get tutoring or if they wanted to go somewhere, they really can't. The, the other closest one is the 7 train, which is a 20, 15 minute walk, right? Who wants to do that? Um, not only about transportation, but you could fund it into our local schools. Think about it, that's 20,000 more people. That's also including their families that would travel here. That means overcrowded in our schools. Our school education is not that great to begin with. Um, so we could be investing that money into that. We could also be investing all that money into fixing NYCHA homes. You have families that are living with paint falling off of their walls. You have families that are struggling with three jobs to even pay that rent. Um, so these are all things that they need to consider before asking a billion dollar company that can, you know, try it on their own. Um, but it's also, uh, um, there is no better deal and the only solution is no deals at all. Again, I say no Amazon in Queens and if possible, no Amazon in New York City. Um, but it's also, it's not impossible to organize against it. We've, uh, I want to bring up a case in Berlin where they were organizing against Google to coming into their cities. Um, it was a long three-year fight, but as of, I think, June or July, they won. Google is not coming to Berlin, so it's not possible. There's hope to do against Amazon. Um, but also take Seattle, its hometown. Seattle, Washington, for example. They negotiated and they talked about creating a deal, but at the end, it just gentrified the place a lot more. Um, and it's becoming harder and harder to even live there or even afford daily life. If Amazon does come here, then the poor will only become poorer and marginalized, while the rich become richer. Hunter's Point, that's the location of the new HQ2, it's already a high-priced area with gentrification taking over the neighborhood. And I mentioned before, the homeowners, the stores, um, and all the other people that are living in that area, how do they afford it now? Hmm. The only way to stop Amazon from destroying Queens and causing all of this irreparable damage to public rent control and any kind of affordable housing is, as we believe, through deep, powerful, strategic organizing. And we take the role to build a strong base of working class that includes everybody in this room um, and immigrant um, tenants as well, Asian immigrant tenants as well as our black and Latino tenants to co come collective together to fight this because this isn't a fight of race, this is a fight of Queensbridge and of Queens. Um, we don't want Amazon in our neighborhoods and we don't want it in our communities. So. This is a call of action. If y'all really want to take more action on this and help out, I will send a sign-in sheet around. Um, CAV is doing a massive teaching for the Queensbridge residents in about three weeks or so, and we do need all the volunteers and all the help that we can get to um, outreach to them. So if you want to volunteer and you speak Bangla, Korean, or Chinese, find me afterwards. Okay. No Amazon in Queens or in Rice. Thank you. Um, okay, our next speaker is Zach Lerner. Zach is Senior Director of Labor Organizing at New York City Cares. Um, yeah, right, here he comes. Okay. Hey everybody, uh, just one quick correction. My name is Zach Lerner, I'm with New York Communities for Change, not New York City Cares. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> All right, so just a quick summary about my organization is we're a community organization that does a lot of community and labor organizing here in the city and on Long Island. Uh, you know, we were one of the founders of the Fight for 15 campaign here in New York, actually organizing fast food workers to fight for 15 in a union, um, which I assume many people have probably heard about. Uh, so just to talk about Amazon a little bit. So I think a lot of people have talked about how much subsidies are going to this company. 
the governor and mayor of our state have both, uh, you know, put together about three billion dollars at a minimum that could go to this company. I mean, looking at this, it could be a lot more actually if you include some of the land value and everything like that that's going to be going. And as many of my fellow panelists have said, right, that um, a lot of this is done around the backs of every single person in the community, that this is something that the governor and mayor work behind closed doors to actually make happen without involving anybody from Queens or around the city. Um, and so this is one of the things that's, you know, I think as people have talked about, right, that, you know, this is going to lead to massive gentrification in the area as, uh, you know, as Sabrina had already said, you know, between NYCHA, I mean, people have already talked about how it's private, how they're already trying to privatize it here in the city due to lack of funding and how much it's falling apart. Our transit system that is continuing to, you know, get worse and worse every day. I mean, I got stuck on the train just on my way here today. And, you know, I'm not trying to get, I don't think we should actually see more of that happening over the next couple of years. And it's only getting worse. Um, Additionally, just to even get on to like some of the stuff that Amazon has done to even fight back against housing, both as outside of even here in the city. Uh, in Seattle, just this past year, they actually, you know, they're also facing a homelessness crisis, as folks know here in New York State. You know, there was an article that came out just earlier this week about how uh, we, if you actually took the homeless population of New York State, that it would be the third largest city in the entire state. And so you look at just in New York, New York City alone, we're already over 60,000 homeless people. And yet, you know, they can find $3 billion for Amazon and not to actually house, you know, homeless people or even subsidize rents for people across the state, I mean, across the city and state. Um, and a in Seattle, Amazon actually went and fought a tax that was actually passed by the city council there that was actually to help just set, you know, it's called a head tax. And it was just a tax on corporations over a certain size to actually fund affordable housing. Amazon then refused to actually build one of its buildings there, saying that unless it is repealed, they're gonna be leaving a bunch of their work that would have been in, um, in Seattle. And you know, about a week later, the city council there actually then repealed it just to appease the Amazon. Imagine what's gonna happen when they move here and they wanna have things happen that you know, a lot of the folks in this room would probably disagree with. Are they just gonna pull out after making a deal with the city? I mean, that's one of the questions that we got to ask, right? And, you know, I think that someone touched on, I mean, beyond just even housing, transit, or any of this, you can get even to ICE, right? I mean, Amazon, there's a nice report that was put out by Mi Gente about a couple weeks ago, where it's actually how ICE was selling facial recognition technology, or Amazon was selling facial, uh, facial recognition technology to ICE. They could start, I mean, they could actually start tracking more undocumented immigrants and just start detaining them. In addition, you know, their Amazon Web Services is actually providing the backbone for the entire uh, organization for ICE to actually be able to keep all its databases and systems going. Um, additionally, you know, I think people were talking about economic development, right? You know, they're going to invest all this money. This is going to lead to jobs and everything like that. When you look at most of these projects that Cuomo has funded using the, you know, the Empire State Development Corporation, they never actually hit the job numbers they ever promised. They never hit the salary numbers they ever promised. But these companies get to walk away with our tax dollars. They get to walk away with very little benefit for any of the people in this room or anybody here in the city or state. You know, additionally, you know, one of the things that I think no one's really touched on yet is sort of on workers' rights. So when you get into it, you know, the majority of the Amazon employees that you see across both this country and around the world are actually warehouse workers. We're seeing this entire transition now from, you know, retail stores that we're seeing closing all the time across the entire country. And so it, like how many people in here buy most of their stuff online when it comes to clothes? Raise your hand. We've got a decent crew of, uh, decent crew of people here. I mean, this is what's happening to our entire economy. People are switching to actually buying stuff online and not going into Macy's, not going to Sears or Target or many of these other places. Instead, you know, you order your shoes, your clothes, your groceries, your diapers, everything's being bought online. And so the workers who are actually having to do most of this are in some of the worst conditions that we're seeing out of any jobs in the entire country right now. In many of these places, they had a big explosive report that came out of the UK about how workers were literally having to pee in bottles at Amazon warehouses because there wasn't enough time to actually go to the bathroom. 
In addition to all of this, you had the rate that everyone's getting put under for many of these workers. They're having to actually, you know, they're putting 60, 70 packages together an hour. And if you don't actually hit that, then you're almost fired within the next couple days. You're written up or fired. And these are some of the stuff that are actually happening to many of these workers that every single day are making sure these packages are getting to everybody in the one to two hours that you may order or even next day delivery. And this is the backbone of what's happening. And we're seeing this entire sector of work in the warehouse industry explode across the country and across the world. Just this past Black Friday, uh, you, had, you had unions and workers and you, all over Europe actually go on strike to fight back against what's going on in these factories. And you had places even in the States where they have workers who are actually fighting back as well. And so these are some of the big issues that are starting to happen across the country and across the world and actually fighting back. And this is something, how are we going to be one of the cities that claims to be pro-worker, actually pro-union, all of this, and we want to get $3 billion away to one of the most anti-worker, anti-union companies that exists in the entire globe. In addition to all of this, Jeff Bezos literally is the richest man on the fucking planet. And I'm sorry, I'm just... I get really emotional about that piece because he is the richest man on the planet and yet we feel the urge to have to give him money to move here. Amazon from the beginning always wanted to come to New York City and to Northern Virginia. They always wanted to do this and they played every other city on, in the entire country just so they could collect their data and get the best deal out of New York and Governor Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio got played by this. And that is why you're seeing so many state senators, assembly people, city council folks in an outrage, along with the communities and everything, about what is happening. And so, just to plug, plug in a little bit about CUNY as well, right? You have, every, they talk about the reason that, you know, Amazon wants to come here is because of the talent, that we have so many schools and education, yet Governor Cuomo continues to not actually fully fund CUNY, right? I mean, how many, people probably see like, they're not even repairing the bathrooms and other stuff. There's just like even just basic stuff that students should be getting at their colleges and universities in the community system. They're not even getting because Cuomo would rather give that money to the richest man on the planet. And so, look, everything is not as bad. Everyone keeps acting like this is a done deal. So the one thing that people can start doing is so there's this thing called the uh, Public Authority Control Board, which actually has to approve the subsidies that are supposed to go to Amazon. They actually approved the land use process. And so that's something that the Assembly, the Senate, and the Governor all have one representative who gets to vote. If any of those representatives vote no, it, will act, it has to be a unanimous decision so they can actually kill that deal. And so this is one of the ways that we can actually start putting pressure to actually kill this deal and actually make it so that we can actually talk about what is good for the people here in New York City and for people in across the state. Um, and so, if folks actually want to get involved in that, I think Yael, who's one of the folks for NYCC, who's actually in the back waving her, I mean, waving their hand right there, um, it, you can go talk to them about any of the stuff, because they've been working with a lot of CUNY students to actually be able to do this. Um, and this is a good opportunity to start calling your local elected officials to actually block a bunch of this and actually call on them to actually stand with the community and not with the richest man on the planet. Um, the other piece is if folks also want to get involved just overall in the general campaign that we're doing, uh, folks can actually text uh, no Amazon NYC to 52886 and that'll set up text alerts. Or if you want, you can also email no Amazon NYC at gmail.com. And so, and I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. So you can text no Amazon NYC uh, to 52886. And that'll be for the text alerts and for email, it's noamazonnyc at gmail.com. And so because I'm an organizer and I come out of that background, I like to end with a chant. So I'm not sure how people feel. People feel good about doing a quick chant? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So one of the chants we did this past Cyber Monday when we took over the Amazon store on 34th Street and also did a rally over here in Long Island City and marched to Kathy Nolan, who, by the way, she's the only assembly person uh, in the area who's actually in support of this deal while everybody else is against it. So if you want to call her and you're in her district, you should definitely call her. One of the chants we did was GTFO, Amazon has got to go. All right? So what you're doing, like, let's do it two times, all right? 
So G T F O, Amazon has got to go. G T F O, Amazon has got to go. All right, thank you. Our next, and, and that was a great um, entree into our next two speakers, both of whom are elected officials. Um, so we're going to hear from Julia Salazar, who is a state senator elect from Northern Brooklyn. She just won a really exciting. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm thrilled to be here, uh, despite the, the uh, reason for being here. Um, I'm as furious as all of you um, about, about this deal. Um, I want to talk specifically about, you know, we, we all, I think, know at this point um, that, that Amazon is a union-busting, predatory corporation, um, that, that this deal, the, the um, tax subsidies, the, um, the development, uh, it, it threatens our communities in Queens um, and throughout New York City, but I want to speak specifically to what we can actually do to, to stop it. Um, this deal specifically and um, you know, future, future deals um, that, like this one, um, would potentially be negotiated behind closed doors. Um, as a incoming state legislator, I know that there is action that we can take, um, and I'm sure that Assemblyman uh, Ron Kim will speak more to this um, as he's going to be introducing legislation in January um, to to try to fight back against against um, deals like this, um, uh, trying to to eliminate economic development subsidies, right? Which which really is is what um, is supposed to incentivize um, incentivize Amazon to come at the expense of taxpayers um, and at the expense of our communities. Um, as it's, I think, been mentioned, uh, we're looking at over one and a half billion dollars in uh, tax credits that will go to Amazon if, if, this, um, if this deal becomes reality. Uh, and this is this is outrageous because, our, as I think was also mentioned, um, our public schools across the state are owed billions of dollars in uh, what's called foundation aid, and our schools are are inequitably funded. Um, in my district alone, for example, in the 18th district, uh, North Brooklyn, that's you know, Williamsburg, Bushwick, Cypress Hills, Greenpoint, we are owed more than 50 million dollars in foundation aid from the state of New York um, across the state. It, it totals billions. Uh, there are schools in Long Island City um, just walking distance from the site uh, where, where they are um, expecting to, to build the, the Amazon headquarters. Um, there's, there's a school that, it, that, a single school, is owed uh, nearly $2 million by the state of New York. Right? Um, we know that that it will take billions of dollars over years to fully fund something like the, the fast forward plan, the MTA capital plan to, to fully repair our public transit system. There are so many better uses for, for this tax money um, rather than using it on, on corporate welfare, right? Uh, but what can we actually do? First of all, um, one, of, one of the most outrageous things about this deal is that it bypassed the Euler process. That's the, the um, land use review procedure that um, the city council has, has input and oversight over development projects like this. Um, Cuomo is using his power as the governor to forego the Euler process. Uh, that's you know, completely outrageous. Uh, technically, the, the governor um, is able to control city land use processes, but we should we shouldn't allow this. And I think as as state legislators, we need to to stand up to this. Um, you know, roughly 25% of the the um, site that they're planning to develop on is is um, public land that the city owns. Um, so we we don't think that that public land should be used for, for this purpose, right? To, to serve private interests in this way, um, especially when, the, when the, we expect it to have such a detrimental effect on our communities. Um, 
the, we know that the total tax breaks that are being offered to Amazon are coming through something called the Excelsior Jobs Program. Uh, that's something that the legislature you know, previously approved, but it has an annual cap of about $183 million, which is actually currently set to decrease uh, in the coming years. And um, in order for, for Amazon to actually receive these credits, the legislature would, the state legislature would need to expand the Excelsior Jobs Program and raise that cap. So what we can do, um, Assemblyman Plan, myself, and our colleagues in, in the Assembly and the Senate, we really need to refuse to raise that cap and, ex and, expend, and extend that program, right? Um, I, frankly, I think that it's, it's a bad program, it's a waste of money. Um, I, don't think it, I don't think that it should exist. Um, but, but what we really need to do is make sure that it isn't, it isn't going to be used to, um, to subsidize a corporation like Amazon. Um, additionally, um, I think that that in order to motivate all of our, our of my colleagues, state legislators, um, elected officials to take action, we need grassroots support. Um, and I'm, I'm really encouraged to see um, on, on a daily basis people speaking out against the deal, uh, people like all of you, advocates, organizing and, and mobilizing against this. Um, but there's action, you know, that, that I think is, is action that can immediately be taken, is, you know, talk to your representatives, but additionally show up, um, you're already doing this, uh, but, but continue to. And, and there are opportunities, whether it's through, through NYCC, um, and their campaign against Amazon, um, also the DSA, I would be, you know, um, it would be extremely off-brand for me not to make a canvassing plug <laughs> for, for Queen's DSA, um, but Queen's DSA is, um, is canvassing in, in Long Island City, in Woodside, um, I think also in Sunnyside, every day uh, to, to try to educate the community about what's going on um, and build, build public support against this deal. So um, there, I think that there is still hope, not only for us to be able to fight this deal, uh, prevent Amazon from coming in and, um, and displacing people and taking really valuable, desperately needed resources away from our communities. Uh, but this is also, I think, part of a bigger, a bigger movement and a bigger cause to, to fight um, corporate welfare and to make sure that, um, that our funds, our state funds um, are actually invested into public programs and into our communities. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Ron is a New York State Assembly member from Queens. He was the first elected official in New York to stand up against Amazon and call for the full cancellation of student debt. Um, so thank you very much. So imagine if we had Julia Salazar and Alexandra Ortez negotiating with Amazon, not going to call them. Where we would be right now? I mean, that says a lot. I mean, three white men negotiating, throwing billions and billions of dollars, and telling us uh, what's right, what's wrong. There's something wrong with that picture and stuff, isn't it? Isn't there? Um, so when I came here with my parents in 1987, how many people were born? Man? So, <laughs> Three people. <laughs> um, I came from South Korea, uh, moved to Flushing. The Mets had just won the World Series. And, and, and Ronald Reagan was a president at the time. Boom, right? And my uncle was the only Republican <laughs> in Flushing who decided, oh, I'm a fan of Ronald Reagan, I'm gonna. Maybe you're Ron, Ronald. <laughs> so this was my destiny. This was my destiny to be here, to undo the damage that Reagan has started our redemption many, many years ago, stripping away antitrust laws and destroying local economies and making billionaires even richer. This was done through design. This isn't happening. This didn't happen through overnight. We can't just blame. 
one politician or even Jeff Bezos for that matter. I mean, this was done through design. Why is it, why is it that, that's my thought on it. <laughs> um, why, why is it that when the economy busts, we give two big to fail banks trillions of dollars to the central banks and federal government while the people go bust, people go homeless? Why is it that when the economy is okay, we give billions, billions, the state of New York give out roughly 35, 40 billion dollars in 10 years of economic stimulus money to the biggest corporations, multinational corporations in the world over the last 10 years. These mega corporations are designed to extract, exploit our community and our planet. So when we give $3 billion tied to their performance, that's what the government says, we're not going to get a dime until they perform for us. So we're betting, we're hoping that they're going to get bigger, they're going to grow, expand, and exploit more people, and we're tying our destiny to a monopoly, destroying our planet. These, these companies are designed to destroy planet. They're wasteful. They produce things that we don't need. I'm sorry. I know, we, I know a lot of people love shopping on Amazon, but there's something also wrong, I'm going to call it out, that consumer, pro-consumer culture. We can't possibly support a new Congress member not in DC in the Green New Deal. And, and not you, I have um, and, 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 and possibly allow this to happen. We just can't. Um, and for me, I'm going to disclose by what I'm proposing, because um, right now, when my parents came here um, in 1997, in 1993, I was there when they shut down their uh, small business, uh, small grocery stores. It was seven and broad. I go back there, uh, there used to be about seven or eight mom and pop stores. There's two chain stores, I'll be coming in five months. And I spent years just reflecting and thinking, what went wrong for people like my parents who came here with the hope to, to put in all they, had, all they had into a small business and, and, and spend the next 12 years paying off their debt? What happened? What happened to the so called American train that's what people bought it for when they got here. And I realized that it, the, the, our economic and political system is broken. It's broken. Amazon is the is, is ultimate example of why our economic system is broken. We live in a debt-driven world. How many people in this audience right now have some sort of debt? Credit card? Mortgage, cars, almost, I would say about 80%, 90%. Right? <laughs> There's a scarcity of money, and when we continuously give trillions and billions to mega, mega corporations, who is taking the burden of that extraction? It's us on the ground. And Amazon is paying 40% less federal taxes than 10 years ago. So who is actually paying more taxes? Who's borrowing more money every single day to get by? Us. So what I've done was design a bill to use that money and to relieve three billion students, uh, three billion dollars, three billion students in New York who are stuck in a lifetime of student debt. So three billion dollars for Jeff Bezos, or liberate three million students who are who are in debt. What it does is it pushes us to have honest conversations about our economy and a debt-driven society because it's uncomfortable. When someone is in debt, I know there's a couple of people who are in debt who didn't raise their hands. I know why. Because there's a psychology of debt in our society. When we're stuck in, in this trap of debt, we, are, we feel humiliated, we feel judged, we often feel shamed by others. And, and that's also not through design to put people like us on the treadmill while Amazon keeps exploiting and extracting us. On that treadmill, they want us to borrow interest bearing loans. They want us to keep just not focused on cooperating and collaborating, but competing, cutthroat, putting whatever you can to get paid off the interest. We need to stop it. 
You can't get to a green, you can't get to a, get to a green revolution, a green economy, if you don't stop that mindset. Imagine, imagine if Governor Cuomo said, you know what, I'm not gonna compete with New Jersey, with California, with Florida, Texas. Screw that. I'm gonna cooperate. I'm gonna collaborate to hold Amazon accountable. To, to bust them up for breaking antitrust laws. That is the kind of leadership that I'm looking for in the executive office. Do you? Um, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna close all my paper, all my all the stuff that I'm focused on is on my website. Because I call it a, a gut checking moment for a democracy. We're gut checking every politician, every elected official, every person in New York. Gutcheck.us is the website. Check it out. All my stuff is up there. Um, and just hit me up if you want to get along. Thank you. Office. I just wanted you to say something. And you know, we have time for a couple of questions. So um, if folks have a question, there are two mics right here. Um, first, we'll hear a minute from Daniel. Um, but please ask questions. Hi, everybody. My name is Daniel Bacchus. I'm part of Alexandria Castro Cortez's transition team. Um, so, uh, Alex is in DC right now going through new member orientation. Um, and our team is on the ground here, helping to get our offices set up and everything. Uh, the way that we are involved in this fight uh, is twofold. One, uh, obviously, amplification through all of her social media. So if any of you uh, have events or actions that are coming up, please let us know. Uh, you can come later and get my contact information, uh, and we will amplify uh, uh, things that are appropriate and possible. Um, and then second, uh, using our network of uh, organizers, uh, organizations uh, to uh, bring people together to get everybody involved so that we can uh, unify this fight to push back against them. So uh, come connect with me afterwards if you have any other questions. Hello, my name is Nico. Uh, my question is for everyone, but in particular, uh, I do want to hear from Ron and Julia. Um, uh, so, uh, Ron went over how lack of funding for uh, public housing, the MTA, for healthcare, for basic human needs are uh, I don't know, human choices, but it's for the planet because of human choices. Uh, what is uh, the solution to that? Is there, uh, I mean, is, is there a lack of democracy in our system? Um, is capitalism to blame? I mean, is capitalism to blame for the giant problems that capital having some power over our lives? Um, is altering the visual consumer activity uh, the solution to combating this problem? Or do we have to change the underlying structure of the way our society runs democratically? Um, and in particular, what is the role of the Democratic Party and the relationship of the money? Like, uh, you know, the Blasio, uh, Cuomo, the deal plays, the deal you progressive buzzwords, but uh, the Democratic Party overall has shown to be close with, with money, uh, to, to, to like funder and capitalists. Uh, so, with the time to become a new party, a labor party in the United States, there you go. First of all, thank you. Um, I would say yes, all of the above <laughs> are causes. It's, um, it's a failure of, of our democracy. Um, it's capitalism. These uh, these things are, are what's, what's driving inequality um, and also um, you know the, the waste of resources, the the um, destruction of our of our planet. Um, we we need to be fighting. Um, to, to improve our democracy, to, to create real democracy um, by empowering people, um, not just through, through election reform, which we so desperately need in New York State, um, but it, and, and through ethics reform, right, fighting for more transparency, um, all just to the, the question of, of do we need a new, a new party? Um, I've definitely been, I've been very critical of the Democratic Party and from within the party. 
um, and, and with a party as um, an active member of the Democratic Socialists of America. Um, I want to see I want to see us break away from from the uh, from the constraints of the, the two party system, um, so that we can actually so that people have, have more of an opportunity to participate in the electoral process and, and by extension the legislative process, right, and actually being able to inform policy. Um, uh, I think as far as a, a, a labor party, the, the labor movement in general is, um, is really under attack in the United States, even in, in New York where we, we have the I think, I think the highest union density of, of any state. Um, however, it's, um, it's still threatened by, by things like national work to work, um, by, by the new vessel corporation like Amazon. Um, and so we, I think, need to, to continue um, to build not just organizations like the DSA, um, but, but the movements that, that DSA is an extension of. So that's, I think we'll, we'll get the last two questions and then um, respond to everybody at once. Um, so so uh, go ahead and then Kayla, and then we'll hear some responses. Um, so, oh, do we have three questions? Let's get the last three questions because um, I know some people are going to leave and then we'll hear our responses. So go ahead. Okay, um, my name is Neil Yunus. I'm from WNYC. Uh, first question is probably for Doug, but anyone else wants to join in. It's how opportunity zones affect um, this whole deal and what, what can we expect to see um, in terms of how opportunity zones will kind of change uh, influence the development. And then the second, I have one really quick follow-up, which is which is a separate question, but um, one argument kind of in favor of the deal is that people in public housing will not be affected because their housing is kind of assured. So if someone wants to speak to that concern as well. Hello. Okay. I just wanted to say hi, Julia. You are my representative. Push um, right here. Um, but it's not so much a question, but more of a comment to talk about how we were talking. You guys were talking about how Long Island City will be facing a lot of gentrification, and as we all know, throughout New York City, we're already facing so much housing insecurity. But gentrification spreads like the disease it is. It's going to go into Jackson Heights and Elmhurst, into different parts of Queens. Woodside's already being gentrified. Bridgewood's being gentrified. Bushwick's been gentrified. Williams long gone. Williamsburg is long gone. Um, and that's another thing that we really need to fight about. That there's no way in hell that Amazon gets all these billions of dollars in tax tax breaks, and we're out here working three jobs, can't even pay our rent, sitting on the train for an hour and a half for a half hour. To What I think that we should all be able to do is take that anger that we have, all the insecurity that we have, and bring that to the street. And I'm not saying anyone should do this, but put the sentiment out there that these representatives need to be so afraid of us through all the shit they come through. Um, MTA yesterday had an action outside of the, there's a fair height for MTA, the audacity that they're going to want to make us pay $3 for trains now, for each ride. Um, they were talking about how maybe Jezo should, Bezo should pay for our MTA instead of us. said about the um, 30 million for New Yorkers um, to help New Yorkers out of that uh, instead of the 30 million for Jeff Bezos. Um, but one question I have about that is um, how do you think that we should get rid of the cases of student, you know, of the causes of student debt instead of like, you know, paying back? You know, it feels kind of like a re retroactive, retroactive. <laughs> Um, solutions instead of like uh, you know moving forward like what will help those students not get into that instead of like you know staying back. Oh, I'll, I'll just say uh, briefly. I don't really know that much about opportunity zones, but they look like a reborn version of enterprise zones. Uh, and all these tax break schemes 
uh, they don't really stimulate a whole lot of economic development. What they do, uh, they're mostly gravy for um, activities that are really undertaken anyway. Uh, as I said uh, early, on, on my, at the beginning of my presentation, the business location of literature, decades of study show that taxes are really a low priority when businesses are deciding where to locate. Uh, they like to you know, top them down and make threats and, 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 and use blackmail or taxes. But really, uh, um, it, it's just an article of faith, not just among Republicans, but even a lot of you know, sort of mainstream Democrats that. Uh, uh, these kinds of tax breaks will stimulate development. They don't. What we need to do to stimulate real, authentic development is to build our physical and social infrastructure. And to do that, we need revenue. And uh, instead of giving it away, uh, two or three percent of Jesus' net worth uh, uh, would, uh, uh, that's how much, how much uh, Amazon would be getting in tax breaks from the city and state. Uh, I think we should uh, go after uh, fortunes like that rather than and showering money uh, on them for completely uh, redundant, irrelevant reasons. Um, I would just like to underscore that point about student debt. We need free college tuition. We need to understand why we need to build debt. Um, the debt. Debt forgiveness is kind of inequitable and after the fact, um, people who have been paying their debts get annoyed if other people's debts get forgiven. But you know, if we have free college tuition, then we'll have to, the problem goes away forever. So, I'd rather, you know, as you said, a forward-looking rather than a backward-looking decision uh, approach is better to me. Um, so I just wanted to touch a little bit on what you said about major housing and not being impacted. Um, in fact, it will be impacted, maybe not directly, but indirectly, yes, around the area you're seeing the rise in um, mortgages and the rise in rent increase, especially for small business owners. Um, you're seeing uh, like the prices around the area, let's say for groceries, or um, the overcrowdedness of the area, the rise in all the populations, the rise in everything, will cause less investment being done into public housing. And right now you're seeing that um, with no, no um, repairs to tenants having no access to hot and heat, um, heat, heat, no access to heat and no access to hot water. Um, what's being done about that? Nothing right now. There's billions of dollars that are being torn into something else where it can be going into NYCHA housing and can be gone into repairs, but it's not. Um, and when, if this investment is being done into Amazon, then that means even less funding for NYCHA. It means even less funding for HUD. How is that going to um, help us solve our housing crisis? Right now, we have, um, Zach mentioned about our homeless population. It's super high. Um, so then what happens to that? Do you, like, all those, it has a domino effect to it. It's not just gonna affect, um, and it's not gonna stabilize our housing. It's already on the brink of, like, breaking down. Um, so yes, it will affect our public housing. So yeah, just to follow up on the piece around housing, I mean, yeah, they're, uh, I'm not sure who the student was, but it's completely right about gentrification, and that's why one of the things that a lot of folks are pushing in the state, uh, in the state this year is going to be around universal rent control. So this is one of the things that we can actually guarantee that people aren't going to have to worry about their rents jumping up, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars just so that they can get pushed out, so that these new people coming in from Seattle, from wherever else, can go and take those homes. And so that's going to be, the rent laws actually expire this year in Albany, coming up in June, or I guess next year technically. And so this is going to be one of the big fights that, you know, instead of them giving away $3 billion, you know, Governor Cuomo should actually be fighting to actually create more protections for tenants so they cannot have to worry about getting pushed out of their homes, you know, especially with everything that's happening right now. And my one other plug real quick is going to be that there's going to be a CUNY action that's actually happening this Friday at 100 Wall Street at 11 a.m., which is going to be going against, uh, I guess, Chancellor Thompson or whoever's the head of the board there. So that's going to be happening at 100 Wall Street at 11 a.m. on fr uh, Friday. Thank you. So just go back to the first question. Uh, yes, if we don't get this right, we might as well accept that we live in oligarchy. If we can't deny Amazon now, this moment, I'm not sure if we're living in a democracy. That answers, and that's, I want to answer that question. I personally believe in what I, some people call it liquid democracy, a decentralized democracy, where people on the ground, peer-to-peer -peer economy, they can make their own decisions, and they hold collectively, like the officials, accountable in a single way, uh, through transparent policies. 
Um, that's what I believe. That's the future that I want uh, for our democracy. Uh, for student debt uh, question, I am 100% for a debt-free uh, college. That would be absolutely great. But by focusing on uh, the current debt, which is well, which is going to reach close to $2 trillion end of this year, the second highest category of household debt, we are admitting the, to the fact that we have a broken higher education market system. So we need to reset. Reset first and make sure that we fully fund higher education moving forward. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, higher education was fully funded by government. And we made a choice that we're going to scale that back and put that burden on you, and then we're going to increase the loans, which is 95% of it is owned by the federal government, interest bearing loans on you. So they privatized higher education. That's why we need to reset it. And the people who are currently in debt, the every, everyday New Yorkers that are struggling, they're on average seven years behind economic growth. Seven years. Meaning they can't move forward, they can't form a families, they can't start small businesses. So a number of economists have proven that you liberate this class, the working class families. The return on the investment in traditional economic sense is tangibly greater. There is no statistical correlation to economic uh, corporate welfare dollars. But there is a correlation if we liberate, if we invest directly into people's debt. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. So um, please join me in thanking all the people.